So what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. As you saw the title said, three quarter ton trucks are a big topic when it comes down to towing, especially with the payload. And a lot of people will say that airbags will make your three quarter ton truck legal. Now they don't necessarily use the word legal, but they say that all you need to do is throw airbags on your truck. Now I want to kind of talk to that today because another thing that people say is that three quarter ton trucks and one ton trucks are identical. And the only thing that's different is the rear suspension. And I want to kind of discuss that with you too today because that's just not true. Stay tuned. All right, before we get started in this video, I want to start off by saying this. I'm not here to tell anyone what to do. All I'm doing is giving you the research that I did and I'm posting it for you. Now, I own the three quarter ton truck. And based off my research, I decided that I wanted to get a one ton truck based off of that and all I'm doing is just going over what I found and getting giving it to you if you are in the market for a fifth wheel and let's say you have a three-quarter ton truck and you have to decide for yourself what's, what's best for you that's it now if you are in the market and you have not made a decision on buying anything yet this video will probably benefit you the most but hey if you just want to listen to it it's good information so the very first point I'm going to make is this if you are in the market for a RV, specifically a fifth wheel, and you're looking at three quarter ton trucks and one ton trucks, one thing I would tell you to consider is understanding and having a good understanding of the gross vehicle weight rating. Now, if you're looking at three quarter ton trucks, unfortunately, they top out at 10,000 pounds. Now, I do know that Chevy announced their new heavy duty Silverado and they've actually changed that number which is actually good news for those guys who still kind of want to use three quarter ton trucks but again if you're looking at my truck that I have currently 2019 Ram and a three quarter ton you're gonna have a 10,000 pound gross fuel weight rating typically on a three quarter ton truck with a diesel because most guys are gonna get a diesel engine because it has more pulling power a diesel engine Ram truck is going to have anywhere between, you ready for this, 1,400 pounds of payload, all the way up to about 2,300 pounds, 2,400 pounds in a really base model truck. Now, I'm just quoting four wheel drive trucks for now. So let's just do a median weight. So let's just say that your payload capacity is going to be 2,000 pounds. You take 10,000 and you subtract it from 2,000, of course you're going to get 8,000 pounds. So that will be your curb weight of your truck. Most of you guys already know what a curb weight is. That's gonna be the truck basically on the curb. When you start adding your family, I just did a video showing you guys my truck on the scale. Now, as you saw in my walk around video of my truck, I showed you my payload capacity at 3,759 pounds. Now, my gross vehicle weight rating is 12,300. Subtract that by 3,759, and what do you have? So that number is 8,541 pounds. My truck, with nothing in it, is 8,500 pounds, over 8,500 pounds. So, think about that for a second. If you have a 10,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating, and you want to tow a trailer, if your family and you weigh 500 pounds, you basically, only have less what is it a thousand pounds of, of, of available capacity which means you barely can tow a travel trailer in some cases because some travel trailers have dry ton weights of 800 pounds so my point I'm trying to make to you is this understand the gross vehicle weight rating and the payload and then understand the pin weight or the hitch weight of a trailer okay that's the very first point now this next point I'm gonna it's gonna be controversial but you know what I don't really care because it's just a facts again it's a fact now one thing I will tell you when you're in the market for an RV or even sometimes a truck is you need to understand and don't forget this because a lot of people don't know this and this is probably the most important point I'm gonna make in this video a lot of people do not understand the role of a salesman so point number two is this if you're in the market for an RV or a truck you need to understand the role of a salesman you might ask what does that have to do with towing well it has everything to do with towing if you don't understand the role of a salesman then that's part of the reason why a lot of people make bad decisions 
a salesperson's role. Are you ready for this? No one's probably ever told this to you, but I'm going to tell you today. A salesman's job is to help you buy something. That is their job description. Now, a lot of people might argue and say, well, that's just not true. But listen, I was once a salesman. And unfortunately for salesmen, salesmen in that role is a hard job. Their main goal is to help you buy something. I'm not saying help rip you off. and not ripping you off. Again, you have to do your own research. And I'm going to get there in a second. But a salesman's role is to help you buy something. I'm going to tell you a story. And just to kind of back this up a little bit for you. When my wife and I were in the market for an RV, we hadn't quite found the Keystone Coupe yet. But we absolutely wanted to purchase a Keystone Montana. I think it was a it was a 385 or 384BR. I can't really remember now. But it was a mid-bunk fifth wheel and we loved it. It had a drop frame, had a huge basement. It had a lot of kitchen counter space, which my, my wife loves because she drinks coffee. She loves to have her coffee pot out. So it was just something that we wanted. But the problem was, I knew that with our truck that we had currently, it was already gonna be a lot over on the payload capacity. So I was like, man, baby, like we really probably should consider something a little bit lighter than the trailer. We really, 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 really wanted the Montana. Now I did some research, found the Keystone Cougar, we actually liked this trailer more. It was actually within the, the, the length, and I'll probably do a video of that why how we picked this trailer, but you know, we, there was a lot of things that came into factor. And one of the things was trying to stay under as much as we could on the towing numbers. But at the dealership, they had Keystone Montanas, High Countries, that's what it was. And it was a Keystone Cougar that they had. Now, we went there to look specifically at the Cougar at this dealership, and they had one that we wanted. It was a 368 MBI. And the salesman was so excited to show us the fifth wheel. He did a great job. He actually knew a lot about the RV, which I was re re really like surprised by. Like he knew a lot, and was like really pointing out things that normally even I wouldn't even point out. But he knew that we weren't like 100% sold on it because it didn't have as much counter space as we would like. There's just a lot of things missing. It didn't have a drop frame, so the you know the basement area is still fairly big, but it's not. It wasn't as big as the Montana High Countries. So we go back inside and like I just you know we go over the price and things like that and they they come out with a pretty good deal actually on the cougar and my wife made a comment because someone pulled in with a Montana High Country probably for service and she's like that's the one we really wanted. The salesman looks turns around and is like you guys like the Montana High Country? I was like, Yeah, we love it actually. That's the one we really want. And he says verbatim, why would you settle for the trailer that you like when you can have the trailer that you love? He's right. Why would you buy something that you like when you could have something that you love great statement and i told him well the problem is my truck is not set up to tow that trailer so that's why we kind of are going for the cougar and the very next statement that he makes is that well you can just add airbags to it that's why i'm telling you a salesman's role is to help you buy something that's it nothing wrong with that because that's their job they're doing their job they're there to help you buy something. They're not there to consult you. They're not there to tell you, oh, don't buy this because you might be over on your payload. They're not gonna tell you that. They're just gonna help you buy something. And if you don't understand that, then that's probably why most of us bought three quarter ton trucks to tow really big fifth wheels because we didn't really understand that. And we kind of used them as our consultants to help us buy something that really we should have not asked them about because his job was done perfectly. He got the keys to the RV, he walked us out there to it, and he showed it to us. That was his job. That was it. My job as a consumer was to understand the gross fuel weight rating, the payload capacity, the gross axle weight rating, and how all that can be affected by the trailer that you pull. And if you don't know these things, you need to go online and you need to do some research. All right, so as you guys can see, I made it to my destination. Now, before I move on, I wanna make one last point on this topic. In sales, there's a lot of stress, there's a lot of long hours, and you typically get underpaid. And there's, because of those things, there's a lot of turnover. And I can't tell you how many people we had come through the doors who had no knowledge of anything about automotive, or even when I've gone to RV dealerships, just, just the lack of knowledge that some of the salespeople had. And some of which don't even live the lifestyle. I mean, if you're going to sell an RV, in my opinion, you should have at least gone camping at least 
five times. I mean, I'm just being honest with you because there's a lot to camping that you just, you have to learn on your own, but there's a lot of things that someone should be able to have an understanding of. So before you ask some questions about towing and will this trailer mate well with this truck and will you be under your payload capacity, don't ask those questions to those people because nine times out of 10, again, they might tell you, well, you could just put airbags on it. Which leads me to my last and final point. So most people who bought trucks 50 and 60 years ago, they bought their truck really for one purpose. It was to carry and haul heavy loads. Back in the day, trucks were very stiff. Fast forward to today, and towing and hauling is probably, in some cases, the last thing on the list for some people. They want a comfortable ride, they want it to have all the technology, and they want it to be able to have the styling to make it look upscale. And I even have friends who have, have had trucks for years, and they have never once towed a trailer with it or even hauled anything in a bed. And I wanted to tie this all in to with this last point. So. Because of how trucks are being engineered today, trucks are using softer leaf springs. They're using softer coil springs if it has a coil spring suspension. Therefore, they need things like airbags or even maybe even a, a extra overload leaf spring pack added to the leaf springs to make them a little bit more stiffer to carry the heavier loads. And that's what I'm gonna tie into my last point here. If you are in the market for airbags or anything that's gonna enhance the towing experience. You need to have a good understanding of the product and you should not listen to other people's opinion about the product unless you've done your research. Now, I do know that most of us have never done the research that we should because if we did, a lot of us wouldn't say certain things online that is saved there for everyone to read. Now, I'm gonna show you guys something. Now, what I show you here is something that actually put me in a position to say, I want to buy a 3500. And if you've ever heard of this company, the company's called Airlift. They actually have a really good selection of, of airbags. And this was actually the company I was going to get airbags for, for my three quarter ton truck. Now, when I went online, I was going to install these myself. And as I was going through the directions, something stuck out to me. I'm going to show it to you here in the description. It's right under where it says important safety notice. It says the installation of this kit does not alter the gross vehicle weight rating or payload of the vehicle. Check your vehicle's owner's manual and do not exceed the maximum load listed for your vehicle. Now, that's not what got me. What got me was this. They went out of their way to give you a definition of your gross vehicle weight rating and your payload. Here it is right here. It shows you what the gross fuel coit rating is, and then it shows you what the payload capacity and what it means is. When I saw that, I got to thinking, I said, let me see what else is out there. So then the next thing I found, I found another company that actually had something called Super Springs. Now, same thing goes with them. I was looking at how I would install it, and I went through the instructions just to see and it says, warning, at the very end, it says, do not load any vehicle beyond the manufacturer's specifications. Now, the very last thing I'm gonna show you is from my dealership. I recall signing this paper, but I did not read it all the way through. Or what I would say is I didn't really read it for like really understanding. I understood what the paper was for, but I'm gonna read it to you really quickly. So here we go. So this paper has a few paragraphs on it and the very first paragraph is pretty low key. Listen to what it says. Any vehicle used to tow the trailer must have a tow rating sufficient to pull the weight of the trailer plus the weight of any cargo that will be placed within the trailer. Now the very first thing that comes to mind when someone reads that is towing capacity. Oh, well my truck has a towing capacity to tow the trailer, right? So we kind of like, oh, well we're good there. And then here's the second paragraph. In addition, the hitch used to tow the trailer must have a tongue weight rating sufficient to accommodate the weight of the trailer plus any cargo that will be placed in the vehicle while it's being towed. Again, so all you have to do is just make sure your your uh, hitch can actually carry the weight of the trailer. No big deal. Like we, we all know these things. Like that that's common knowledge. Now, what I want you guys to understand is this: in the very first paragraph, it talks about tow rating. Most people instantly go to towing capacity with that when they hear that, so they're good. Now, they don't tell you anything about gross fuel coit rating 
And this, but what they do do is they, they, they mention it, but they don't say it out loud. And the final paragraph that I'm going to read to you, it says, please be advised that both the towing vehicles rating, now they're talking about all of them now, and the hitch tongue weight limitation must be observed. And then of course, your failure to do so may result in damage, and then most importantly, could result in injury or death to your family and other innocent persons. When I read this, and when I showed you the disclaimers for the products, the only thing I can see past all those disclaimers is, everyone has lawyered up, and they all have their hands up like this, like, hey, we told you so. And you're gonna sign these papers, and you're gonna read these, these disclaimers, and you're supposed to read them before you install anything on your truck. And you need to have a good understanding of all these things, because if you don't, guess what? You're liable. That's why I decided to get 3500. And I'm, I'm just being honest with you guys. Hey, I feel better about myself. It's a lot of money to have to trade from one truck to another truck. I mean, granted, I'm a little bit more fortunate and blessed because I work for the company. I get employee pricing and the truck I traded, the truck I got, I got really good deals on it. And they gave me more money for my trade-in and they gave me a little bit more off the truck off of the employee pricing. So it worked out a little bit better for me in the long run. But everyone's not gonna be that lucky. I know a lot of people make very impulsive decisions. They buy something they're not supposed to buy and therefore they get jammed in it and they can't really get out of it. So what I would tell you is this, be careful, learn from your mistakes and make sure when you're towing, you do it safely. Thank you guys so much for supporting this channel. I hope this was helpful. I was hoping that this would be like a 10 minute video, but please share this video if you think that it was helpful for you and be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys. And I almost forgot, I'm so sorry. So a lot of people say that three quarter ton trucks and one ton trucks are the same. I kind of agree with that because if you look at the engines, if you look at the transmissions for the most part, if you look at the brakes and the frame, they are identical trucks. The only thing that's different that, that really sets them apart is the gross vehicle weight rating. On the one tons, they have a higher number. On the three quarter tons, they have a lower number. And if you can't change that number, Unfortunately, you can't change the capacity no matter what you add to your truck. Thank you guys for watching.